Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be showing you two classic examples highlighting some important concepts when heading for opposite side casting positions. If you enjoy the content, please let me know by dropping a like or commenting below. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more weekly chess content. I hope you guys enjoy. The first game is between Roberto Grau, a strong Argentinian chess master who represented his country at multiple Olympiads, and his opponent is Aaron Nimzovic, one of the most important players and chess writers of all time. The game followed e4, e6, the French defense which was Aaron Nimzovic's most preferred weapon against 1e4. Here White has a number of choices but went for exchange variation which isn't the most dangerous since it frees up the problem French bishop on c8, bishop d3, black has a number of settles but he went for knight c6, c3, bishop d6, simply developing pieces at this point. Here black needs to develop the knight and g8, he can go to f6 but he wants to leave the option of pushing the f pawn and also wants to avoid the pin on g5, so instead it goes knight e7, also hinting at the option of trading off light squared bishops which is one of white's most um, important attacking pieces in this position. Queen c2 stops this so black develops the bishop to a more aggressive outpost instead on g4 attacking the knight. Knight d2 defends the knight f3. Here black plays the move queen d7 which is quite a flexible move since black doesn't want to yet commit the king to the king side he wants to wait and see where white's going to put his king first. So white castles, so it's clear now that black has the choice if he wants to enter opposite side casting position. And here black chooses to play the move f6 which makes his intention of casting queenside pretty clear. If he wanted to castle kingside then he might have preferred a move such as h6 instead. So after f6 White played the move uh, rook e1. Um, then other, other other moves as well in this position, but rook e1 is a okay move. Here, black plays the move g5. So he already starting to push the pawns on the king side and get his attack rolling. So in the opposite side casting positions, there are a few things to keep in mind. So the main plan that both sides will go for is a pawn storm. So we're going to try and push the pawns to break open the enemy structure on the other side of the board. Tempo is very important in this aspect. So it becomes such as a race. So whoever can open up the king first usually has the um, better position. Also we want to avoid pushing any pawns in front of our king because this will create weaknesses which makes it a lot easier for our opponent to open up lines. You also want to watch out for any open files and diagonals since open lines makes it a lot easier for you to get an attack going. Here a good move for white might be to play the move b4 since white can try to get a head start on the attack since he already knows black is most likely going to go queen side and keeping the king in the center isn't a good option. Instead white went with h3 which um, is okay to play h3 only if there's something concrete in this position but if white doesn't have anything then long term um, this weakness is going to be very very um, bad for him. So white starts his attack going with um, b4, pawn storming on the queen side but the difference is here clearly black hasn't pushed any of his pawns whereas the pawn on h3 creates a big opening for black. He can play g4 whenever he wants and automatically gets an open g file to use. So black continued rook to g8. So now both rooks are on the h and g file. Notice that he's not worried about white taking this pawn on h7 since um, taking it would be very bad. Opening lines uh, on the h file and g file um, clearly help black. White continued a4 and here black played a useful move which you should keep in mind in these opposite side casting positions and that's the quiet retreat knight to d8. 
and this is a very prophylactic move and a move you should remember since uh, we don't want to allow the move b5 with tempo unless our plan is to blockade on um, a5 with the knight in general we can um, avoid this gain of tempo now if white plays b5 then he doesn't get an extra tempo by attacking the knight continued b5 black continues h5 knight to h2 rook to g7 white now played a5 and here black plays king b8 which is a useful move to remember whenever your opponent is threatening to play b6 because the king here is much safer than it is on c8 bishop a3 the trading of the bishops don't really affect the position too much although it does make um, playing g4 a bit harder so we have to watch out that if we play g4 too early in this position then white is going to answer with the move h4 and now it's going to be difficult for black to try and open up lines on the king side so when you're attacking with your pawns you want to make sure that uh, you don't allow your opponent to blockade because then it's going to be very difficult for you to do anything and essentially your attack um, dies out so instead Nimsvich plays the move h4 now when he plays g4 then he's going to open up the g file by force b6 here black doesn't have to do anything um, with the pawn because since taking the pawn will only open up more lines for white instead he just plays the move rook h to g8 th threatening to play g4 next move so one thing to notice here is that we're not afraid of white taking the pawn on a7 since um, black has this move king to a8 so it's very common when you're being attacked to use your opponent's pawn on the h file as sort of a shelter so in this position if black does this then the pawn on a7 isn't really useful for white it's actually making the attack much harder to break through if he plays a6 we don't need to take it either we can just blockade with the move b6 and these two pawns for white actually are more of a problem than anything else and if white takes the c pawn then we can take back with the queen and here we see that our two weak points are well defended I mean our pawn on b7 is on an open b file but it's very difficult for white to attack it since we're going to defend along the 7th rank and we also have our minor pieces coming back to defend white plays the move a6 and now white's threatening to take the pawn on a7 as well as the pawn on b7 and open up the a and b file so black has to make a decision here on how he's going to capture um, so it looks like the attack is very strong for white in this position but in fact it's going to be hard for white to very uh, to break through without making some serious sacrifices whereas black because of this h3 move can always easily break through with g4 so here black decides to simply stall on the king side uh, queen side so the best move here is to take with the c pawn but if you take with the b pawn um, this wouldn't be very good since after a takes b7 we open up the a file for white and here white does have a very strong attack threatening to play his rook into a8 so instead we should use the defense after c takes b6 and now our idea is to defend the a7 pawn which is the only weak point in our position and we're going to do so with our knights and also along the 7th rank with our queen and rook black takes and here uh, black just goes knight to c6 defending the a7 pawn which is our weak point Here, after bishop b5, white has no threat, so we can continue with our plan by playing the move g4, breaking open the king side. Takes, bishop takes. We have two rooks lined up on the g file as well. White plays the move queen d2, threatening to put the queen onto f4, which would be a quite a strong attacking and defensive defensive square. So black stops this by playing queen d6. 
rook goes to a2 and here already um, the white attack is completely stopped um, a7 pawn is guarded very well and black just has a, a easy attack here black has a nice win it looks like bishop h3 is a good move here but instead black found uh, a nice win to finish off the game so here he played the move bishop to e2 creating a strong double threat against the bishop and also the pawn on g2 which is threatening checkmate and here um, Nimzovich's opponent resigned because he's losing the bishop on b5 so this was a first example and this was to highlight the fact that we should avoid playing moves such as h3 uh, pushing pawns in front of our king in opposite side casting positions in general isn't usually a good idea unless we have something um, clearly forcing in that position or concrete so now we're going to look at the second game the second game is between Alapin Harmonist and the game started e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 and here Alapin went for the move c3 which is called the Pontiani opening there's also an uh, opening after c3 in the Sicilian defense, which is actually named after Alapin himself. So this may be a reason why he went for c3 here. Similar idea, trying to put two pawns in the center. Here black counters with the move d5. A common idea in the c3 Sicilian as well. White doesn't take. White goes queen a4 instead. Setting up the move knight takes e5. Black defends the pawn by playing f6. White goes bishop b5. Knight e7. Here white takes the pawn. Queen takes. There's some theory in this position, um, but we're going to try and skip through the opening phase because our focus will be on the resulting middle game position instead. So here white castles. Black goes bishop e6. White plays the move d4. To challenge the pawn in the center, notice in this position um, black's pieces are a bit awkwardly placed on the king side. It's going to be hard for him to develop the bishop on f8 because it's stuck with the knight on e7. And so black is most likely going to castle queen side in this position. So after takes, takes, black indeed castles queen side. Knight c3. The queen here has a few squares. The main squares probably be h5 or f5. But considering black wants to push their h and g pawn, black goes for the move queen f5 instead. White plays bishop e3 to develop his final piece. And here black decides to straight away start the attack with the move g5. And we get to a middle game position with king opposite side castled. But this one's slightly different from the previous one we looked at with Nimzovich. So in this position, if we look at um, who has the better prospects, it's clearly white because white hasn't pushed any pawn weaknesses in this position. Um, his attack looks like it's not um, starting as fast, but um, he has the open file on the C file. So his rook can enter via C1 and create some pressure along this um, semi-open C file and also his pieces are very active in this position while black's pieces are very awkwardly placed and it's going to be hard for him to develop in an effective manner by continued rook c1 h5 black is looking to start pushing the pawns up the board here white continues with the move b4 since the threat of g4 isn't yet um, a problem, for example, if he plays g4, then white can use the square on h4 to gain a tempo on the queen and also blockade. So the tempo will be very helpful here because white is threatening um, an attack himself on the opposite side of the board. It's going to take the knight and then push the pawn up to b5 next move. Therefore, Black has to waste the move here to play the move h4 in order to stop the knight going there. And here we see a move which we've already seen before in our previous game, 
and that's uh, the prophylactic night retreat, knight to e1. Since we know g4 is coming next move, we can anticipate that g4. And here white has a, uh, a number of moves, but he decides to keep the bishop instead of trading it for the knight on c6. And generally, whenever you see knights in this sort of configuration where they're both heading towards the same square, um, generally it's a good idea to just keep them like this because both knights want to go to the same square but if you keep them like this then um, they'll have much less space to work around and also uh, we want to keep our bishop pair because then the attack will be um, a lot stronger so if it goes bishop d3 And now the move b5, attacking the knight and also winning the a7 pawn. We see that black hasn't um, had time to play the move king b8 as in the previous game to shore up the queen side. And here after b5, knight b8, white simply wins the a7 pawn and his attack is uh, a lot stronger than black. Black's attack hasn't um, even really taken traction yet. Bishop h6. Every move white makes comes with a serious threat and it's uh, gaining a tempo. So knight a4 comes with the threat of knight to b6, checkmate. So black has to do something about this. So rook d6. So here we can play knight b6 still. Because if the king goes to d8 then the knight on b8 will fall. So black has to give up the rook here. But simply we take the rook and because of this semi-open c file we see that um, we have this pressure on the c7 pawn we also now exchange up so black plays c6 so white is completely winning here but let's see how white finishes the game off so it takes the pawn knight takes and again every move he makes comes with um, a tempo and a serious threat Rook a to b1, bringing the rook into the game, attacking the b7 pawn. Black goes back to defend, and now white finds a nice move to finish off the game. Pause the video for a few seconds if you want to try and find it. Okay, so here white played the move, bishop to a6. A nice finishing blow in this position. And here black resigned, since there's no way for him to counter all the threats since if takes here white can simply take and after king d7 mate would follow on b7 well if black takes here with the knight then white has many options here the easiest one being rook takes c6 and after taking back we can go queen takes a6, followed by our rook coming to the 7th rank with a winning position. In summary of opposite side casting positions, um, the positions will be a race for whoever can open up the enemy king the quickest and develop an attack. So we want to be very careful when we push pawns in front of our king because it makes it a lot easier for our opponent to open lines. We also want to make sure that we're the faster side, so our pawns are far more advanced and our pieces are in the attack. And also keep an eye out for open files and open diagonals which might already give you a head start when um, going for an attack. And I'm sure you'll have lots of fun playing this sort of plan and you'll get some really interesting positions from this. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you next time on the next one. Later!